We're mad about markets, but turns out we're not the only people mad about markets. A lot of them entered the stock markets in the last two years and they're equally passionate, much more savvy, and they want a lot more. Who are these people? We try to profile them. I'm Mangla Malu, with me is Ritu. Hi Ritu. Hi Manglam, have money, will buy, that seems to be the mantra of these new age investors who seem to have an insatiable appetite to invest in the markets. To delve deeper into this, we did conduct a poll on our social media handles and that gave us a really good insight into the behaviour of these investors that are now coming to the markets only in the last few years. Uh, but you know, why are we talking about them today? We'll tell you through our segment which is called the Number Crunch. Now retail shareholding in NSE listed companies stood at 16% which is currently at an all-time high and at last count the total number of active traders or investors on the Bombay Stock Exchange that stood at 7.8 crores which is a 45% jump from the number of investors than we had last year. And they're swelling by the moment as we speak you know 8 crore people that's bigger than most of uh, the developed countries as well and the number of people that we're adding every month itself is more than the population of a lot of these uh, European countries so one doesn't have the exact age profile of these investors. There's no quantitative data to suggest that yet. But anecdotal evidence, people you speak to, people you see on social media, it suggests that they're all under 35, if not under 30. They're smart, tech savvy, and they have the zest to learn ropes from anyone and everyone who has the patience to answer their some very tough questions as well. So we conducted a poll that got over 1,200 responses. And the first one was, of course, to quantify the age profile of these investors. And that was startling because 8 out of 10 respondents were well below the age of 40 and nearly 1 out of every 2 were below 30. 46% of our respondents below 30. But a large chunk of the respondents have been active participants in the market for over 5 years. That's the nature of these polls which attract those uh, kind of people. What was startling here that 4 out of 10 actually entered the market in just the last two years. 40% entering in just the last two years. The pandemic really has done something for the equity cult. Yeah, Manglam, it seems all the money that they saved from not taking Ubers and Olas to go to <laughs> office and a whole lot more they have invested into the markets. And, you know, we're not the ones who are saying this, actually. Uh, Upstocks claims that seven out of its uh, ten investors of more than four million customers that it has are actually first-time inve investors and they're under 36 years of age. It added about two million customers in the financial year 2021. 80% of them were in the age of 18 to 36 only. Zeroda, for instance, says that the average age of their users is between 25 and 35 years of age. Also take the case of Paytm Money. Now there, 80% of the investors on the platform are under the age of 35. If you look at small case, the number is even smaller. The average age of investors using small case today, that is only 28 years of age. Well, that's the nature of that media, right? These apps were directed towards those guys. But we find out yeah. increasingly, for even traditional brokers, the age of investors is actually coming down. And these guys are extremely savvy. The savvy retail investors don't simply invest in mutual funds or ETFs. They actually handpick individual stocks and also dabble in something like cryptos, etc. We found out that over 40% of their respondents, our respondents, got their investing ideas, knowledge and insight from a lot of the social media posts as well. So influencers doing their bit. Of course, a lot of them do their own research as well. And a lot of them are actually investing serious amount of their income. Over a third of their income, 46% of the people, almost half of them, invest nearly 30% of their income. While they're investing serious capital, they're also in it for the long haul. While 74% said they're investing for the long-term returns. Let's see whether they stay on or not post one bear market. A fifth of the respondents also said that they entered the market because investing one was easier. Secondly, they had some extra cash during the pandemic. And thirdly, they recently learned about investing because all the other options were not as, uh, uh, you know, reward giving if you must. It is and you'd want to know where it's growing, right? It's not your usual Maharashtra or Gujarat intuitively that you would think of, but the penetration of the internet and accessibility of information has meant that investors across the country are participating in the markets now. Now take the instance of states like Assam for instance, earlier not so active in trading, they added 7 lakh investors in the last one year. That's a 200% increase in the number of active trades. 
traders take your other states like your Madhya Pradesh, your Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, etc. They all saw anywhere between 60 to 90 percent jump in the number of active traders. So you wouldn't really have expected this, but you know that's what the pandemic has done. Accessibility, you said it. You know, so one wonders, uh, right? How and why investing has become so much easier? We did ask our respondents how they invest and. More than half of them actually use apps like Zerodha, Grow, Upstocks, Five Pese, all of them. Over the years, while traditional bank backed brokers like Kotak, HDFC, and ICICI, access to financial markets has actually become easier, cheaper, more tech driven. The user experience has gotten better. And if you club these apps with the UPI apps, nearly 7 out of 10 investors are using the discount brokers as well as uh, the UPI apps to put their money to work. And why not, Manglam, you know, because today the options have really increased and investing is a whole lot easier than it ever has been. So your institutions from Mumbai seem to be losing their stronghold, a stronghold to techies from Bangalore. The space that was earlier dominated by the likes of your ICICIs and HDFCs and Motilal Oswals, the IFLs and whatnot, is now the playground of the likes of Zerodha, your Grow, your Upstocks, your Five Pese, your Samco. So, you know, the space has really evolved, Manglam. It has evolved. I just take that zero. Zerodha from here and put it out here because Zerodha with half the experience of Angel Broking for instance today commands the largest market share 19% nearly one out of five people trade with Zerodha then the triple five five year old five pesa.com has nearly five percent market share guess what it's more than the market share of established players like uh, you know Motilal you have HDFC securities Kotak securities all of them as well so definitely democracy in terms of access to the markets has happened. You have so many apps, Ritu. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, uh, some of these didn't exist until, like you said, five years ago or so. So the nature of investing, the ways of investing, everything has gone a dramatic shift. And a lot of it, of course, we're able to explain with the numbers. But let's talk more about that, Mangla. Let's talk about uh, uh, the ways these apps function. The first uh, lot is the execution apps. You have the early version of Zero Tha, Upstocks Grow. What they would do, they would just allow you to buy or sell on their apps. So that's the execution kind of apps. Then there is a whole host of other apps which provide both research, what stock should you buy, what their analysts are saying, and then you can buy on their apps. So research plus execution would be a fair amount of these traditional brokers out here. ICICI Direct has the app, Kotak Securities, IIFL. If you want just one app which has only the research and the execution you use, zero dars of the world, then you can go to Money Control, of course, Stock Edge, all of them provide just the research and no direct market access. But you know what, Manglam, if you want to club all of this together and you want a super app that will take care of execution of equity, your research, insurance, mutual funds, payments, lending, I'm running out of breath here, <laughs> you have the likes of Paytm and more apps that are coming up in this space. If thematic investing is the way forward for you, go for small case or fires for all your non-equity related investments, that is crypto, your debt funds, your digital commodities, overseas investments, you have the likes of Vazirex and many more. Now with all of these options on the table, how does one go about selecting the best possible option? That is a bigger question that we're going to be asking. What works? What does not? Let's figure out the yeas and mays of the new and old tools of trade. Now, let's hear it from the people who are in this game themselves. From the New Age Brokers, we have Prakash Gadgani, the CEO of Five Pese. And also joining us from the traditional bank back brokers is Vijay Chandok, the MD and CEO of ICICI Securities. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Great to be here. Thanks. Great to be here in a room which has more than two people. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Prakash and Vijay, for Thank coming you. in. Thank and you. you know, it's the first time we have uh, the old and the new, if you must, if you <laughs> must, together talking about uh, the traditional brokers again, if you must, versus uh, the discount brokers. Prakash, let me come to you first. Everyone's talking about the discount brokers and all of that and stuff. Is cheap brokerage and ease of use your only uh, one trick, two trick pony, if you must? So I think, uh, Bagalab, the way it started earlier was uh, the price differential. Uh, hmm. you know, I, I might take two, two and a half years back when discount broking was just catching on. I think that was the time when price was the selling point because we were coming at a fixed fee and then uh, the incumbent hmm. large uh, uh, full service brokers were coming at a percentage uh, brokerage on the value of the trade. But I think over a period of time that has now uh, is negligible. Hmm. Everyone uh, is almost on the same par uh, as the pricing is concerned. I think it's more in terms of the ease of use, the uh, the ease of opening a DMAT account. I mean, it might seem very easy for us, but that's a big thing that how easy it is for you to open an account, how easy and in language 
in your own language, whether you're able to access capital market information, I think it's moved much beyond uh, pricing. Well, uh, Prakash, I'll pick up from there and toss that question to Vijay. Uh, what do you have to offer that players like Prakash don't have? Because they have the advantage of pricing, like he said. Uh, or like you said, there's some more people who are, are you able to give the kind of discounts that somebody like him can? First things first. <laughs> uh, thanks for having me for this show. And uh, you welcomed us, uh, introducing me as a bank-backed traditional broker. Bank-backed perfect traditional broker, far from that. <laughs> we are as new age as one can get. Hmm. Uh, and let me say that very clearly. So, uh, indeed, uh, pricing has got commoditized. Yeah. I think there's everyone who's actually converged on pricing. What really differentiates is experience. What really differentiates is whether you're able to meet a customer uh, to, meet, to his objectives of coming mm -hmm. to the markets, which is wealth creation. So, the whole game is now moved out from pricing. I think everyone have converged there mm -hmm. uh, to a game where you can differentiate on experiences and help your customers to get him to participate in the markets in the right way. So you know what started out as pricing, you obviously converged and all of that, that's how markets uh, work. A couple of questions. One, has the age profile of your investors come down as well? And secondly, your older bank backed, uh, so to say, have a fair more, far amount of more costs than uh, the upstarts. So at those prices, are you making money? Uh, indeed, you've seen our numbers. Yeah. <laughs> right. So it's there for you to speak. We uh, ended last year with more than 1000 crores of profit. Uh, yes. Um, Average age, you're right, it's coming down. A couple of years back, average age in the platform used to be about 20, 30, 31, 32, in that kind of a uh, bracket. It's now down to 27. Yeah. Uh, and we are acquiring more and more younger Indians uh, joining us. Uh, the percentage is clearly increasing. So the average age has gone down to 27, you That's said. Right. What about you, Prakash? I mean, one would assume because you're a digital app, the average age would be even lower? Absolutely. So uh, almost 82 percent of our uh, customers are less than 35 years of age. Okay. And but but I don't see that as a surprising trend because if the country as a whole, the demography of the country as a whole is a younger population, then mm. this is just a reflection of what the overall population is. It's just that at some point of time, this uh, investing was more considered to be uh, someone who is matured. I mean, when yeah. I say it's it's by age, <laughs> uh, and you have more uh, surplus income. But I think things have changed. Hmm. And now anyone and everyone, it's become like an in thing. It's a trend that uh, you're young, you started investing, uh, you started earning, it's yeah. better to invest. And hence... Uh, but is this only something that happened on, on the last couple of years because of the pandemic, because of the time and extra cash people have? Or what's really driving this new age investor interest? So for us, uh, we started somewhere in 2016. For, yeah. us, for us, from day one, our population was younger. We never had an older population. So for us, it was not a change. What has happened from the pandemic is it, it has been, it's, it's proven to be an influx point for the industry. It typically happens in digital space. It happens that there is one event which triggers and uh, you know, takes the industry to a different level. Yeah. COVID uh, has proven that to be, and hence you see like all of 50, 60 million people suddenly coming to the capital markets to the direct route. I think a small trend had started earlier with people coming into mutual funds. Mm. I think pandemic has uh, you know, taken them one step ahead mm. uh, to approach capital. So we think that let point, me, let me yeah. jump in here. Let yeah, me please. jump in here. The Gen Z, you know, mm. the person born in the mid 90s, uh, they are born typically as a digital native, you know, with a mobile phone yeah, in yeah, his yeah, hand. Yeah, yeah. A large population of them, about one and a half crores, is our assessment, who turned uh, 25 yeah. uh, in 2020. Hmm. Uh, in 2021, another 1 1.5 crores 20, uh, turned uh, 25. And, and this trend is going to continue. So hmm. you have a bunch of young Indians, hmm. completely digital natives, yeah. coming into economic India, so to speak. Hmm. Uh, and because they live in that format, and you know people like us are able to offer those services in that format, hmm. uh, you're seeing uh, huge participation from that those hmm. uh, sets. And probably COVID has just kind of been an inflection point to bring that kind of a behavior into the market. So, so let me just cut to the chase in that case because both of you are saying it's all about the experience, prices now converge, the new age investor is digital savvy and all of that and stuff. That still doesn't answer my question. Why would I choose uh, uh, something like an ICICI Direct or why would I choose 5 Pesa? What I, the house is open for both of you all, 5 yeah. pounds. So first, <laughs> I'm first, the customer, five, yeah. convince me. First things first, right? At our place, you'll get all uh, services of investment Do I get in the one new place. place? 45 products across basic pro uh, investment products of uh, fixed income, deposits, right through mutual funds, equities, FNO, uh, HNI, wealth products, uh, market uh, investors coming in giving you 
uh, uh, cases just like you have mm. uh, uh, one click investments there yeah. uh, then uh, protection we offer all kinds of protection services loans we offer all of them so it's it's a one place go to place for all your uh, financial needs no, it, it was the h and i between the two of us so <laughs> it, you, please go for that but prakash what's your pitch then you have an rm right you have an rm <laughs> when you need it right best in class research right you you have our research who's uh, rated amongst the best on the street and you get access to all of them uh, and of course uh, you know you have some great uh, propositions yes instant liquidity when you sell shares okay. nobody else offers that okay so there are great things going there okay prakash i think it's your time to counter a lot has been said okay so our our pitch is simple mm. uh, uh, you are a guy who wants to start trading yes you are someone who or a uh, girl Oh, yeah, yeah, girl. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> You're uh, talking to an H and I here. <laughs> uh, no, we we have almost 15% of our customers uh, like women uh, investors. So that that segment is growing anyways. There you go. Uh, so the pitch is simple. That the, from the time you decide to open a DMAT account and invest, how entire journey is is your opening a DMAT account takes more than five minutes. If it is not taking five minutes, then that's the first tick. Hmm. Second is how much time does it take for me to transfer funds? How much time does it take for me to execute my first trade? And is the look and feel, is the UI UX younger? Am I able to relate to the platform? I think that clicks. Hmm. I mean, if you ask a younger guy why a uh, Insta clicks more than a Facebook, why a Snapchat uh, clicks more than anything, uh, any other app, I mean, they would say my experience. Yeah. For me and for my customer, it's the experience, and that start. That's a starting point. If you are, if I'm ticking box all, that's my customer. Yeah, so, you talk about experience out yeah. here. You know, my worry is that here he has everything. I have an ICICI bank account. I call them. There is margin and all that stuff. What if I have a different bank account and the money is debited from my bank account? The shares are not credited. There are so many people. It's it's just extremely confusing for me to actually pinpoint the blame. Yeah. So to that extent, and, and I mean, you might end up yeah. losing money in the process, right? If the money is not immediately transferred, you're not able to make the trade. What happens then? So how do you cover for things like that? I think that problem is solved beyond. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's 99.9 percent .9 solved. So today, UPI and net banking, and there are too many uh, you know easy steps to which a fund transfer happens. It happens instantaneously, both back to the broker and out. Mm -hmm. So that problem is already solved. Second, uh, it's it's easy for uh, people like us on the other side of uh, you know the business to say that we have everything. I mean, mm -hmm. we do have a lot of products. But at the end of the day, is the customer looking for a platform giving everything? right so we i mean there there are talks about having super app for everything but if you see history and if you see the digital behavior people like one app for one thing which does not confuse me i come to a a, a social networking app with an objective yeah. i don't come to a money control with an objective i don't come to fipesa with same objective yeah. try and imagine that you put everything under one basket hmm. will i be more confused or will i be more happy that's why it's try that ICICI I direct markets. You will get that <laughs> focus, razor sharp uh, focus on markets, market products, yeah. and with a great user experience. You guys have both made your points. So both Ritu and I will take our time to decide. Uh, but until then, we will watch out for the market share for both of you guys. Thank you. It was, in fact, indeed great conversation that we had the yays and mays of traditional and non traditional brokers uh, who are making their pitch for the new age customer. Just take a short break, come back. We talk about some more as well. Thematic investments, we get chatting with small case on the other side. Stay tuned.